Oh, this topic is bringing up a lot of shame. I had a panic attack. My first one, um, a couple months ago, I had a fever and I was taking care of my toddler and toddlers like to run around and it's physically exhausting. And if you have a fever, you shouldn't be running around. You should be laying down. After that, I decided to reflect on my life. I think whenever something bad happens to you mentally, I think it's time for me to reflect on why it happened and how to prevent things like that from happening. Long story short, I decided to take a step back and do YouTube less because I can't not raise my child. I mean, I've been doing YouTube for almost a year now, which is kind of crazy. Before this, I was gaining a lot of traction on YouTube. It took me eight months to get to 40 more subscribers. It took me three months to get to 100 more subscribers. And then I stopped working as hard because I can't give 100% to everything I'm doing. I cannot be spread that thin. My body is telling me. <laughs> and so I started taking any anxiety medication and I started to work less and try to enjoy the YouTube content I do create and be less anxious with my daughter. I was looking at my count and now I'm at 218, which is slow. <laughs> it's not the pace I was gaining traction before. And I just started to think like, what's the point of doing this? I'm doing this for a whole year. And while I believe my content is creative and fun and meaningful to me, I'm not even sure if anyone likes it. I mean, I only have a couple of subscribers. I love you all, thanks for subscribing. It just made me feel like, hmm, if a tree falls <laughs> in a forest and no one's around to hear it, did it even matter that it fell? You know what I mean? I was watching Ethan Hawke's TED video about creativity and how you should just do what you love and it will come back to you. I was already believing that, like I was already leaning towards that. I'm still gonna do this because even if no one finds this helpful or entertaining or they don't find it useful, <laughs> They don't find any joy in my content. I enjoy creating it. And I think that in itself is meaningful to me. It's weird because I was like thinking of Van Gogh. I was like, Van Gogh was not loved in his time. No one loved him. <laughs> He was crazy to people. It was only after he died that people appreciated his work. And it made me think, God, will my work be something that people appreciate when I'm dead? And then it made me think even worse. I was like, fuck, what if it's not even appreciated then? What if it becomes a speck in the internet and that eventually is obsolete in general? And it's just a sad revelation, you know, to think that your work, that you pour your, your heart and you enjoy so much, that no one else appreciates. But then I was like, the fact that I am willing and I have the time and energy to create work that I love, even if no one appreciates it, um, I guess I'm happy and grateful that I can still do that. Work is a very interesting topic for me. I feel a lot of shame when I talk about work. I don't talk about my work often. I'm very joyous about most things. And I just feel there's a lot of shame in work, in a lot of ways. I'll just tell you about my career journey. So I went to college. My mom told me I should be an engineer, a doctor, or a lawyer. So dumb. I know I'm Asian. That's the roadmap to success to an Asian parent. And I'm 18 and I didn't have my own voice at the time. I was very insecure. My background is very chaotic. There was a lot of just surviving the day in my background. And so, so I didn't think about who I was and what I find joyous and what means something to me. I was majoring in engineering, lots of engineering. I was a mechanical engineer, I was a structural engineer for a time, and then I majored in computer science because that's where the money is and that's where all the respect is. And it was the dumbest shit ever because I do not like computer engineers. I am a very human person. <laughs> not that engineers are not human. My husband's an engineer. Like he's a computer science engineer and he is not human. He's a fucking robot. And I think a lot of people in that field don't have that human touch, that like communication. When I asked for help, they would be like, why don't you just Google it? And I'm like, I like that talking to people kind of thing. I know it's like old and like not great in the era of information information and technology that I still want that human touch, but I, that's just who I am. When I graduated with this degree, I didn't want to use it. I was adamant. So I was on the quest to find the career I would love, which was horrible. <laughs> so painful. I thought I could be a teacher. So I was a math tutor. I hate children. I should have known then that I shouldn't have been a mother. <laughs> I wanted to be a makeup artist. So I was, I was working at Estee Lauder at Macy's just to see if I enjoyed the work. And it's, mm. it was not mentally challenging. <laughs> And then I tried to be in finance. I thought that was like a very good middle where, because I'm Asian and I do like math. <laughs> I like math. And I 
wanted the respect. I missed having respect. When I was in college, when I was in a student, I had a lot of respect. I had good grades and that's what people respected and I had a good major and I went to a good college and so people respected me and after I was trying to find myself for a while I felt like no one respects me anymore. I am not as reputable. I have lost my status in life. Like that was a revelation and uh, it took, gave me a lot of humble pie but also a lot of shame. Like what's wrong with being a math tutor or a, a makeup artist? I don't know. Or not even knowing what to be in your life. Like it's just something you do to live your life. It shouldn't be who you are. Um, but in America they make you feel like that. <laughs> they really do. So it was really hard for me to meet new people because I just felt like they would in automatically just ask you what do you do as opposed to trying to figure out if you're a nice human. I even tried to start a business idea which was this clothing line. It didn't do well. I felt like a failure after that. I quit trying to do anything and then... <laughs> And then I had Rory, which is so amazing. She brings out the worst and the best in me. <laughs> I love her so much. And I wouldn't be who I am without her. And even though I talk a lot of shit about parenthood, there's a lot of beauty too, for sure. It's beautiful and hard as fuck. <laughs> and, um, and then I realized who I was. I love humor. I've always been the type of person to make people feel better by laughing. Um, when I'm in pain, I really use that to fuel my humor. <laughs> so I have a lot of dark humor. But it helps me process and it helps make the life easier to live. That's always been a part of me. And so, <laughs> I started YouTube. <laughs> And I've done this for a year and I don't even know if it's doing anything for anyone. If I can help people. And I think of if I'm helping people and I think of how I want to help people, I come back to this. Which is kind of crazy because I don't even know if it will do anything. <laughs> I am so grateful that I get to do this. That even though it pays me nothing. <laughs> I feel so much joy and meaning and finally this feels right, you know? And I know a lot of people don't have that and I don't even know if it's going to do anything or if I will get the status <laughs> I've missed from being in school. I mean, if you're an Asian kid and you're in school and you have good grades, that's all people care about. <laughs> and you have the status, this respect, this like, they're gonna do something with their life. And then when you go into the real world and you can't apply everything you learned in school because really school is all about falling and the real world's all about leading your own life, no more respect. <laughs> and while I've been in that whole like no one really respects what I do like I was a stay-at-home wife for a while and no one respects that but I'm like hell I am living the dream I did nothing I was happy that was a good life fuck you guys you are just all jealous of me and then I became a stay-at-home mom and I was doing a thousand things and no one respected me either because people don't respect people who don't work even though I'm pouring my heart and soul into my child stay-at-home moms do a lot I'm not saying working moms don't do a lot I bet they do a ton too all moms do a lot <laughs> And we all deserve respect. In general, we all deserve respect. Anyway, so I'm back to doing YouTube. I finally found something that I truly enjoy that feels meaningful and people are connecting. Even if it's growing slowly, the fact that it's growing, people comment and they're genuine. When I get comments, I either get guys who want me to be on OnlyFans, <laughs> a bunch of furs out there on the internet, or women that really connect with the fact that I'm a mom and they're a mom and they see my pain and I see their pain because this is a nice level. <laughs> And that's lovely. I mean, that part, not this part, that weird, creepy thing I could do without, but it's also funny. So the fact that I love humor, hopefully I can do something that's helpful and humorous and the people that I'm attracting are also ridiculous <laughs> and humorous in their own way. It's just like so great. <laughs> and then sometimes I feel like, what am I doing? I'm not even getting paid for this, you know? But I love it. I think I have to think of it as in a different way. I have to think of what I do as a hobby that I love and I'm just trying to get better at it because I, I love doing it as opposed to the fact that I'm thinking of it as work because yes like youtubers make money off of this some youtubers do I don't <laughs> damn um, 
but it isn't work right now either. I'm choosing the videos I like. I'm choosing to make videos that talk about content that I enjoy, that I care about. So in a way, it's not work yet. It's just a hobby and I'm doing it for free. I mean, some people go to karaoke bar bars and pay to sing or some people go to a club and pay to dance when I'm doing it for free. So I sh want to change my perspective. I guess I hope this video inspires someone to be brave and if you have the luxury, to, you have the time, you have the energy to fight for your creativity and what you love, I hope this helps you feel like even if no one fucking watches you, that you're happy you did it anyways. You know, we put YouTubers that have millions of subscribers on a pedestal and that we don't feel like anything we can create is as beautiful as this person or as talented as this person or that you'll never make as much money as this person. But if you think of it as something you do because you love it and because you want to get better and you just find a lot of meaning in doing it, then I, I just think it's like nice that we get the opportunity to do that. And I hope you have the courage to do your own thing. I don't know what you fucking wanna do, like just do your own thing. Whatever your bliss is, following your bliss, because life is fucking suffering. So you have to find and fight for the little thing that makes you happy and just go for it, I guess. So when I think of that tree that fell, and no one was around to see it, I think if that tree felt meaning or joy and purpose, then it was worth it. I don't know, that's what I think. Okay, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you next time, bye.